I for one hope I die in some freak spud-related accident so that my tombstone can read, she died as she lived. Potato. Hello. Today we're doing something a little bit different. So I guess this is kind of a new format of video. Your girl's getting a little burnt out from sewing all the time. All the time. So, today I wanted to talk about death. More specifically, Victorian deaths. Art thou intrigued? A while back, I stumbled upon a book called The Victorian Book of Death. Death. Mm. <laughs> Fact check myself. Nope. Okay. The Victorian Book of the Dead. And with a title like that, you know that I had to read it. What harm ever came from reading a book? Now in this book, it covers different death practices of the Victorian era. More specifically, there is a whole chapter of strange deaths. Most of you know that I am super nosy. <laughs> that just happens to include wanting to know how people died. The reason I love history so much, even the morbid fascination with how people died, I think is all part of, I just I love stories and I love humans. <sighs> I'm not a lizard person, I promise. <laughs> Overall human experience. It'll be a long video. Human experience, and that includes something we all do someday, and that is dying. <laughs> kind of wish that all tombstones had on them how people died. I, is that disrespectful? I don't know. I for one hope I die in some freak spud-related accident so that my tombstone can read, she died as she lived. Potato. That long spiel aside, what I thought we would do today is I would read you some of these entries into the really strange deaths while I kind of do a Victorian look. I picked out a Victorian hairstyle that I want to try. I'm not going for 100% historical accuracy here. I never am. We're going for vaguely historic. I myself am vaguely historic. Oh, come on. Let's talk about Death. That wasn't as funny as I thought it was gonna be. My second cup of coffee for the day. Heck ton of bobby pins. My makeup. I look like a grandma that's confused about what time period she belongs to. Before we dive into these strange deaths and the look, we do have a sponsor for today's video, and it is my favorite sponsor ever. So to talk about that, here's sponsor Rachel. Oh, gotta put my coffee down, hold on. <sighs> Speaking of death and the fragility of the human state, today's sponsor is Hunter Killer. Oh, I'm more uncomfortable than I was. Ow. Hunt a Killer is a monthly subscription box, big murder mystery game. They have different campaigns and different seasons. Their most recent campaign was Curtain Call, a murder that happened in old timey New York and you need to figure out who killed Viola Vane, a stage actress who had the chance to be a star. Loop. Nope. If that doesn't sell it for you, I don't know what does. I know, I'm sorry I did that. It's kind of become a tradition between me and my best friend Tommy that we will crack open a couple of cold ones, and by that I mean Diet Cokes, do a box or two of Hunt a Killer. <coughs> Trying to film a commercial here, kids. Actual detail that Hunt a Killer puts into every single box and every single prop really makes you feel like you are sifting through actual evidence. You will get a box and inside documents, corner reports, uh, newspaper clipping. Each box is an episode and each episode you have a different goal. So for this one, it was to eliminate a suspect. Hunt a Killer starts at just $25 per box and part of their proceeds go to the Cold Case Foundation, which is a foundation that is focused on solving actual cold cases. So if you guys did want to check out Hunt a Killer and uh, start sleuthing, perfect activity for a winter evening in front of your fireplace or in my case, if you're cheap and lazy, the portable fireplace that you keep in front of your actual fireplace because your actual fireplace doesn't work. Make sure you head to Hunt a Killer and use my code for 20% off of your first box. Thank you so much Hunt a Killer for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. Welcome back. Let's get started. I already put foundation on because woof. I guess we can do eyebrows. Do you ever have one of those mornings where you accidentally catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror? And you're just very disappointed. That was me this morning. Woof. 
So quite obviously, some of these are probably going to be a little more brutal than others. It's kind of in the title of the video, so if you don't enjoy that kind of thing, it's not your cup of tea. Here's your last chance. So as far as I know, all of these were true and they were featured in Victorian newspapers. Starting off nice and strong, wizards found in girl's stomach. Two live lizards, three and a half inches long, several smaller ones, and a number of lizard eggs. Ugh were taken from the stomach of Level Herman, 19, four days before she died. A post-mortem examination showed that the wall of the stomach had been attacked by the animals. For several years, she had been ill, complaining that something was clawing at her stomach. Specialists were puzzled until finally, working on the theory that it was a tapeworm, found the lizards. That sentence in itself is not something I thought I would ever read out loud. Miss Herman drank water from a spring in which there were lizards. Okay. And it is believed that she swallowed the eggs or the young animals at the time and that they grew a while in her body. She craved meat and eggs during the four months of her illness and it is believed she demanded such animal food because the lizards, as well as her body, had to be fed. I don't think that's how that works. She ate ravenously, but weighed only 80 pounds. Incidentally, the health officials refused to accept the certificate of death based on the wizard theory. December 16th, 1910. So, just to set the tone, disgusting. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of that one Rugrats episode. Unfortunately stayed with me my entire life. I think it was Chucky eats a watermelon seed and they're all like, oh, a full ass watermelon's gonna grow in your stomach. And so they have to shrink themselves and go into Chucky's stomach to receive the seed. What even was Rugrats? I would imagine after fostering these lizard creatures in your stomach, grow quite attached to them. Get me four pounds of meat. My babies are hungry. It's a little more thick than I am. Boiling them to be. I just get carried away. I start the process by being like, okay, I'm not gonna make them that big today. And then before you know it, thick. It's fine. Another one. Are we having fun yet? Parrot was a gas fiend. At last killed his owner by tearing off burner while she slept. Alice, not 23 years old, came to her death yesterday through the instrumentality, wow, of her pet parrot, an evil disposition bird. Whoever wrote this obituary was not holding back. Obituary. Obituary. Who was cordially detested by everyone except his mistress. He would follow her from room to room and was never happy except in her presence. He was generally regarded as a devil. His unpopularity was increased by an uncanny habit of pulling the tips off the gas burners with his strong beak and inhaling the gas until it stupefied him. He was a gas fiend, a feathered victim of the gas habit. Go let that one sit for a while. Go easy on the poor bird, man. God, doesn't help that uh, my TikTok for you page is pretty much solely birds getting into hijinks. And I'm not mad about it. While his young mistress was sleeping yesterday, the parrot took off the lava tip in her room. This time, there was no one near to avert the consequences of his deed. This is so dramatic, oh my god. When Miss Knott's relative, alarmed by her long silence, broke open the door, they found her dead. Her little murderer. Her little murderer was found half unconscious by the door. When he found himself succumbing to the gas and was not rescued as usual by his mistress, he realized that something was wrong and he had wit or instinct enough to make for the door and shove his bill as far as he could underneath it. He recovered and while the coroner was in the house, the malignant little bird was caught trying to turn on the gas again. September 14th, 1899. Brilliant. I can just see her sleeping peacefully and in the corner, all you see is... <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Now there's not much eye makeup in the way of Victorian styles, but I think darken my eyelids a bit. This is Victorian inspired, so darken it a bit and then add just a tiny brown wing just to kind of fake the shape of my eyes and make them look a little bit more cat-like. <laughs> Nothing to get you in the holiday spirit quite like a murderous parrot. Killed by gloves, one of the most singular cases of poisoning ever recorded. A young lady in perfect health and with the brightest futures before her. Wow. Read much? Where was I? <sighs> Pressure. This is like back in the classroom when you went around the room to take turns with the paragraph and you would do the mental counting of how many people before you. And so you would know which paragraph you're gonna get. And then you practice that paragraph only to learn that you were slightly off and you have to do the one before or after it. <clears throat> anyway, she was among the guests invited to a ball and her toilet completed. 
invited to a ball, and, comma, her toilet completed, comma, she drew on a pair of long gloves reaching above the elbows. Well, I'm gonna assume that means something else. When I die, put me down for uh, my bowel movements not being recorded in the obituary. Thank you very much. Scarcely half an hour. Afterwards, she felt considerable irritation and pain in her arms and hands. When returning home, her suffering increased, and the following day, her hands and arms became covered with sores, which were attributed by the doctor to blood poisoning. A week later, the poor girl died after a severe suffering. The fatal gloves have been handed over for analysis, the conjecture being that the animal with the skin of which they were made uh, was in some way or other diseased, and that the skin used had been imperfectly cleansed. That sucks. A little bit of eyeliner here. I'm gonna need to focus for this one, so forgive my silence. That'll do, pig. Side note, I got really excited last night watching the most recent episode of Bob's Burgers, and Tina said that. That'll do, pig. Sorry, that's from a different movie. Ha <laughs> ha. I do that. All right, blush. Heck ton of blush. I wanna look like Santa. Am I holly jolly enough? Killed by paper mache mask. Paint melted and caused girl's death by blood poisoning. Them's the runs. Is that a phrase? Or is it them's the pits? I mean, both equally suck, I would think. Little Frida, the 14-year-old daughter, I, I don't care, is dead at her home as a result of blood poisoning contracted by wearing a paper mache mask at a Halloween party she recently gave a number of her young friends. At the party, all the children wore masks and there was much romping. That's what the kids are doing these days. Rumping. The perspiration on the girl's face melted the paint on the mask and this contaminated an abrasion on her upper lip. November 14th, 1902. I'm gonna put a little mascara on here. Do this color and then go over it with some pink. Another side note, I started mountain biking with Nick. Nothing quite dries your lips out as much as feeling the wind in your face. A patch of dry skin right on the corner of my lip. Forgot how annoying that is. You think it's healed and then you yawn or something or talk a little too boisterously. A patch of dry skin is instantly like, Surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. I feel like the only way to solve it is to take a vow of silence and I, I can't do that. So I feel like it's just gonna always be there. I'm gonna put a little bit of this same cream rouge. I think we can maybe move on to hair. But before we do that, freak accidents. Ooh. Yes, please. Receives fatal wound while embracing girl. Singular accident which led to the death of Thomas 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 M. Doherty. Had sweetheart in arms when a needle she wore fatally stabbed him. The authorities are of the opinion that the girl is innocent of murderous intent. She says that she had been mending her brother's clothing with a long needle, used hereabouts in mending miners' heavy outer clothing, and that on going downtown in the evening, she stuck the needle in the bosom of her dress. Doherty, who had been her sweetheart, hailed her and asked her to take a walk with him. He attempted to embrace her, and the point of the needle that was in her dress caught in his vest while the blunt end rested against her corset. In the embrace, the needle was forced into his body, through the fifth rib, November 13th, 1906. Oof. I mean, to be fair, I feel like if anyone were to uh, walk anywhere in this vicinity, the chances of you getting a hidden needle in your foot, much like Home Alone, <laughs> slim, but definitely not 0%. I feel like to penetrate human skin with a needle, you'd have to be going pretty damn hard, especially for him not to notice enough to be like, hey, Back up. Let's stop. That's how I like to embrace my husband. Body bumps. <gasps> Let's just leave it like this. This is... Oh, this one's fitting. Strangled with her own hair. Madeline Mesner commits... Oh, okay. Nope, that one's a bummer. Not gonna read that one. Took poison for fun. Just for fun, Carrie Madison, age 20 and pretty, took a dose of strychnine at the farmhouse of Frank Richardson in the eastern part of Woodbury County. I took it just for fun, was her only explanation. I saw it there and I thought I'd take some just for fun. Understood. The young woman climbed from the cellar where she took the drug to the kitchen where she told Mrs. Richardson of her act. Before anything could be done to relieve her, she was dead. May 1st, 1907. Okay, so this is kind of the idea that I'm going for. You know, it kind of just looks like I can just throw up and twist in regards to my hair, <laughs> not an activity. It looks like I'm gonna leave a lot of the bottom section out and just curly and then throw up, throw up. Eh, 
we'll see. I feel like with the right amount of bobby pins, you can accomplish anything. Just don't go to headbutt your lover. The circus in town inculcates uh, the lad with a passion for throwing somersaults and for standing on their heads or hands. Master Jesse Pratt, aged 11, spent a whole forenoon in somersaulting. His bowels became so twisted and tied into knots that in 10 days, the derangement proved fatal. September 16th, 1873. That sucks. Singular circumstance, a Baltimore paper states that a girl died recently in Virginia from having bitten a thread with which she had sewn up a rent made by the... What? She had sewn up a rent made by the bite of a mad dog in her apron. So was she sewing up a wound that a mad dog made? with the string and then she bit the thread and died. Word to the wise, when you're trying to pull a needle through a bunch of fabric and it's really hard with your slippy fingers, don't use your teeth. Why ever not, Rachel? Oh, I will tell you. I was embroidering something for my new baby niece, pulling the thread because I am an actual primitive human being who has not learned not to use her teeth to open things. I was doing this, felt something hard in my mouth, pulled it out and it was a little bit of tooth. <laughs> Very hard to see, but right here, chipped a little bit of tooth off. Sewers, ye be warned. Except I'm pretty sure everybody already knows not to do that. But uh, just in case you needed a little bit more proof, there it is. Proof, there it is. All right, so this is kind of the idea, but I'm... Okay, all right. We're gonna take this section. We're gonna do a little twisterino here. Okay, all right, all right. And then same thing with this side. And then, yeah. Actually, I kind of want to braid this. Okay. Gonna do a little twist here. I have no idea what that looks like. I mean, I guess that's kind of Victorian looking. So I fixed my bangs a little. This is kind of just doing what it wants. So we're just gonna leave that alone. But the back looks something like this. Now I know what you're thinking, but Rachel, it is December. And to that I say, okay. So we'll do a couple more. I think I'm just about through with Book of the Dead and trees. Um, a lot of them have to do with, you know, it's really bummer stuff. So, you know, we're just trying to keep it light and uh, merry, so. I looked up a quick article that's pretty much the same thing. England, 1875, a mouse dashed suddenly onto a work table in a South London factory. Into the general commotion which followed, a gallant young man stepped forward and seized the rodent. For a glorious moment, he was the savior of the woman who'd scattered. The mouse slipped out of his grasp, ran up his sleeve, and scurried out again at the open neck of his shirt. In his surprise, his mouth was agape. In its surprise, the mouth dashed in. In his continued surprise, the man swallowed. The mouse uh, began to tear and bite inside the man's throat and chest. Unfortunate fellow died after a little time in horrible agony. Ain't that the rats? <clears throat> Crushed by his own invention. Sam Wardell couldn't afford to oversleep. He lit the streetlights in the evening and needed to be up early to put them out again at dawn. It wasn't a job for slobs. He took a standard alarm clock and supercharged it, adding a Wallace and Gromit style embellishment to ensure that he woke up in time. This is what I need. <laughs> First, he connected the clock by a wire to a catch he fitted to a shelf in his room. Then he placed a 10 pound stone on the shelf. When the alarm struck, the shelf fell and the stone crashed to the floor. On Christmas Eve, he invited some friends round for a party and he cleared his room of furniture to make space. When they left, he dragged his bed into the room. He was tired and didn't pay much attention to where he put it. At five o'clock the next morning, the alarm sounded, the shelf fell. The stone dropped straight onto sleeping Wardell's head. So one last one, laughed himself to death. Farmer Wesley Parsons, he was joking with friends in Laurel, Indiana in 1893 when he was seized by fits of uncontainable laughter and he couldn't stop. He laughed for nearly an hour when he began hiccuping. Two hours later, he died from exhaustion. Can you imagine being in the group of friends in that situation? Like how long until it becomes a little concerning? <laughs> we're laughing, we're laughing. <laughs> Okay. 
mustache. Oh, very Victorian. I think that about wraps it up for today. I had fun. So this kind of format of video, I think I wanna try to start doing more of in between my big projects. So let me know if there are any specific topics you would like me to do some research on and some reading on and uh, report back. I feel like it's kind of a new format of YouTube videos a lot of people are doing where, you know, it's almost like a podcast where you're presented with information and you can learn some stuff. And meanwhile, we can do a look of some sort. So here is the finished look. Thank you once again, Hunt Killer, for sponsoring this video. If you did want to go check them out, which I highly recommend, you can click the link in my description and use my code. Oh, sleepy lump. Proto, you know what would make you way more cozy? Turn on fireplace. Is that better? Here's the definition of better, of a more excellent or effective type or quality. Thank you. You got it. That is it. I love you guys whether you are new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday and we have fun here. Happy winter time. Be careful, y'all. Don't get impaled by any needles. Watch your creatures of the aviary kind very closely tonight. Don't eat any lizards. Just generally, maybe don't live in Victorian times. Bye. Rarely, it may be thought, oh, what? Oh. No, nope, don't want that one. Where's my brown? Take these little sausages out. Uh, what? <laughs> In flashbacks to middle school, oh no. When he began hip, Five dollars per box. If you get, Let's talk about death, baby. Let's talk about you and me.